Okay, so the goal here is to get the thyroid hormone T3 at the optimal level and then get that T3 into the cell. If you can do that, you're going to feel much better and have much less thyroid symptoms. In order to achieve this, let's take a quick look at this chart. The pituitary gland produces TSH to stimulate the thyroid, which in turn produces T4. This T4 is then converted into T3, which happens predominantly in the liver and in the kidneys. And then the T3, which is the active thyroid hormone to give you energy, is taken into the cell so it can act upon the appropriate receptors. Each step along this pathway, there's factors that can improve this process, and then there's factors that can inhibit this process. So let's look at these factors from the aspect of the five steps that you need for optimal thyroid function. Adrenals and stress reduction. It's all about cortisol. If you're putting your body through a lot of stress, it will lead to elevated cortisol, which can lead to an imbalance in your thyroid. High levels of cortisol inhibit the production of TSH. An elevated cortisol level can also impair the conversion of the thyroid hormone thyroxine, which is T4, into the more active T3. Also, the amino acid tyrosine, which is needed for thyroid hormone production, is also used in the production of adrenaline, which means that if you're undergoing a lot of stress and producing more adrenaline, the tyrosine is being used up for that purpose instead of working on the thyroid hormone. Finally, under high levels of stress, your liver has decreased ability to get rid of all the excess estrogens. As estrogen increases, it increases something called thyroid binding globulin. And this basically binds all of the thyroid hormone in the blood and it's bound up so they can no longer act on the cells and on the receptors to get the positive benefits on your energy metabolism. Stress doesn't make anything better. That takes me to the second point, which is other endocrine imbalances. So we just talked about estrogen and how stress affects estrogen, which affects your thyroid. Anything that increases your body's production of estrogen to higher levels than required. Uh, for instance, uh, a diet really high in sugar leads to elevated insulin, which leads to more estrogen being released from sex hormone binding globulin, this increased estrogen then causes more thyroid to be bound up and your metabolism comes down. So then you can see this link with estrogen, thyroid, weight gain, the whole channel. The third point is vitamins and minerals. As we looked on that chart earlier, there's a lot of vitamins and minerals that are needed to help support those conversions and productions of thyroid hormones. So zinc, selenium, iron levels and iodine. These minerals are all extremely important. On top of that, then you have a lot of the B vitamins that are required to support the process of T4 being created and then converted into T3. So if you are deficient in any of these nutrients, you will not have optimal thyroid function. The fourth point, as opposed to thinking about what nutrients do you need to add, it's more thinking about what toxins do you need to avoid. And those are typically are called the halogens. They're in the same family on the periodic table as iodine. So things fluoride, bromine, chlorine, these can all bind to the receptors where iodine would typically bind and displace the iodine so that it can't have the, the beneficial effects that it needs to have on the thyroid gland, lymph tissue, breast tissue. So avoiding fluoride, bromine, and chlorine is very important for optimal thyroid function. Lastly, exercise which is important for everything. And how it works on thyroid is that increased exercise increases your T3 and T4. And even more importantly than that, increased exercise increases the sensitivity of your cells to T3, which means that even if your T3 levels aren't coming up as much, if the cells are more sensitive, you're gonna get more of an effect of T3 on the cells. So exercise is completely crucial for thyroid function and metabolism. Typically when you're approaching thyroid, from the, a natural perspective, you're looking at three to six months of consistent treatment to see the benefit. And in doing this, you can often avoid thyroid hormones, even desiccated thyroid hormone, depending on what your levels of thyroid were going into the treatment. So how do you apply this to your day for this three to six month window? Let's go through it. Daily exercise. When you're first starting exercise, set the bar low. People always think they need to do 45 minutes, an hour in exercise, and then they know they don't have time to do that. 
aim for that 10, 15 minutes to start just because everybody has 10 to 15 minutes in their day that they can do this. And that's the best way to kind of get into this routine. So whether it's ideal, if you could do something at home, that's even better. Um, I love, I like the concept of, of gyms, but we want to think about the worst case scenario. And that is that you're too busy to go to the gym. You don't have time. So you need a small space in your house, big enough that you can stretch your arms out, not even necessarily any weights at all. And you could just do a 15 minute exercise following along with YouTube, even if it meant just marching in place for 15 minutes for the first time, get yourself moving. It's going to help reduce stress and reduce perceived stress. I have no idea what is going for on with you in your life right now, but I'll just say this. Don't take on so much, be satisfied with less and enjoy the blessings that you already have every day in your life. They're there. You just got to look for them. Filter your water to get out the halogens. So just a filter to get out chlorine, bromine. From a diet perspective, you want to keep it simple initially as well. Focus on cutting out the processed garbage. So all of the processed flours, junk foods, pops, sodas, high sugary foods, get those out of your life. Every condition that I work with improves faster when people remove those foods. I don't even think I would call them foods, just when they remove that junk. The keep it simple method for supplements when it comes to this is I would just suggest a B complex that you take in the morning, just take one, and then a multi-mineral that you take at night. And again, a multi-mineral that has selenium, zinc, iodine, and some iron in it. And yes, I do realize that the absorption of those does decrease when you take them all together, but no one is going to be taking the time to take 10 different pills and space them out throughout the day and set your watch so it's 45 minutes apart. It's just not realistic. So even if you're absorbing a little bit less, at least you're taking it. So a multi-mineral at night, B-complex in the morning, keep it really simple and just make that part of your routine. If you really want to get better and improve your thyroid, you can do this. So take that three to six months. If you need to write everything down as you're doing it because it helps with accountability, then I suggest to do that. And then after three to six months, reevaluate, see how your symptoms are feeling. Get your thyroid retested, check your T3 levels at that point to see how everything is going. And then you can reassess from that point. I'm Dr. Yates, and I'm wishing you an optimal thyroid health.